On today's show, free swimsuits for everyone except most of you. Plus, author Scott Ladotti joins the show. We'll ask him what he thinks about bringing your own drugs to death row. And a 30-something a millennial walk into a recording studio. Who the hell knows what's about to happen? It's all here on Looch Dog in the Morning. Let's start it. Blue, you're my boy. And now. That's all you want. I'm the one who's going to be on TV. From TTR Studios. I can't quite remember how that one goes. I, I got to admit, I'm a little high. No biggie. I'm cool. It's Looch Dog in the Morning. Ladies and gentlemen, get up! Welcome to the show. It is Luch Dog in the morning. We missed you. It's been so long. We're so ready to go. We're joining forces today with Belly Matt Lavelle and Braxton Blue from Millennial Fridays. What's up, dude? What's good? Yes, we first meet. To- Kim's gonna be mad. Let her be mad. Hot mess. We love you. We miss you. We'll see you soon. Yeah. She's working hard. We All shouldn't of you even out tell there. her we tape. We should just uh, put it up and she'll be like, what? Exactly. I'm not, even <laughs> tell her. I'm not even telling her. This is the first she'll find out. So hot mess. We miss you. We love you. We've got voicemails from Maddie Mads down in North Carolina. We've got Uh-oh. Uh oh. Rex, yep. hit me with this swimsuit thing. I'm actually pretty excited to get into this. We might even touch on Big Baller brand with the bar ball, which I'm not really pumped about, but it's kind of relevant, so... DC I'm sports? not a big baller. I can't afford those shoes. <laughs> well, you might be because you live in DC, and right now our sports teams kick ass. So suck it to the rest of the country. Yeah. And yeah. especially Boston and Pittsburgh. Yeah. Agree. Right. Right we'll now, yes, absolutely. Very Welcome we're going to the show, down. guys. It is on Lu- um, X Lucio X on YouTube at LITM Podcast. Everywhere else, a little rusty. I haven't done it in a while. Feels good to be back. Yeah, got to get the lube on. <laughs> <laughs> so Braxton Blue. Tell me about this swimsuit thing going around all kinds of Instagram. What's happening, dude? Okay, so I think it was last week or maybe like four or five days ago. And I start seeing this one photo of this girl in a red one-piece swimming suit sitting on the edge of a pool with just like it'd be that picture and then the name of the company tagged as the caption. Okay. So I started getting curious. I saw it like three or four times. All these girls are doing it. I'm like, okay. Like, and so I go and it's like, okay, you have to repost this picture, tag the company oh, in the this. photo. Like hashtag it? And hashtag it. I saw this for sunglasses. Did you see the sunglasses? They're giving away the free green sunglasses with like wood siding on I Facebook? have seen the one he's talking about, not the one you're talking okay. about. Okay. So yeah. like, this is common. Like, but here's the thing, It's a little right? different ad system. Yeah. Facebook's is a little different. They really utilize your cookies and utilize what you look oh, at. Oh, internet, internet cookies. I was like, wait, so what? So if you recently <laughs> looked up sunglasses, you're going to see sunglasses on your Facebook Yeah, feed. it freaks me out sure. a little bit. Almost if you thought about but it in Instagram's the last 24 different. hours, it'll show up This on is feed. a viral thing that they're trying to get their fans to do. Okay, yeah. so what happened with it? Okay, so long story short, they gained 750,000 followers in one day. Oh my God. So that's a huge gain. ESPN, like, oh ESPN should do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here they can't fill all those orders so yeah, they I'm promised right. a free swimsuit to i guess about seven hundred and fifty thousand. they people. didn't put a limit on it no there was no limit Ooh. initially and then it started going viral and then like they came out with a statement and they were like hey uh we didn't expect this to happen sorry our <laughs> plan worked <laughs> sorry our plan worked yeah but it's like 750,000 units. How are you supposed to produce but see, that? That's my nightmare. It's like you come up with an awesome plan, you execute it, and you can't do the back end. Like, true. how did you not see this coming? Right. Free swimsuits for everyone. Yeah. I can't believe that took off. Don't worry. It's just on back order, Adam. You'll get yours in like six years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, no, thank you. Yeah, but, and then this was the funniest part. So, like, I started seeing it, like, five, ten times on my feed. All these girls, like, tagging their friends, tagging the company, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, some of my guy friends would start, like, photoshopping themselves into the photo, like, (laughs) totally trolling it and, like, tagging the company. Oh, did that take off as a meme? I'm sure it did. Oh, yeah. 
There's had this to. one. Bella, you've seen this? I've I saw I've yeah. seen a lot of it. I mean, if you're on Instagram for more than five minutes and you follow more than one woman, then you will oh absolutely see this image. Yes, and it is absolutely. It's just you scroll down. I saw it like four or five times in my feed in one day. Oh wow! And that's that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was a huge trend, but with seven hundred thousand plus gained. So Here, are they just like doing only like the first hundred thousand, and then everybody else gets them, or are you just screwed? They if you're said past? they're gonna try to fill the first fifty k. <laughs> That's a Out lot of, of seven hundred and fifty thousand, dude. You don't sleep for the next month, dude. You know what they're gonna make off of that? Although Nothing. I guess not if they're only getting shipping costs. Well, here's the thing. So I was kind of curious, and I did some research, and I looked into it. The shipping and handling cost was still like fourteen dollars. That can't cost them that much. It's no, a, it's a swimsuit. Yeah. So it's a swimsuit. It co- or it weighs probably nothing. I don't nothing. know. Yeah, two pounds. Pound? Nothing. No, Less not not even a pound. The stuffing like in there pound. probably weighs more yeah, with the air yeah. in the bags holding. So they're in. still profiting so off what do you those think units. Of, so what I do you would think guess about their marketing, like, because I was really wanting. I mean, I took this as kind of like what Lavar Ball is doing, the big baller brand. You don't really think that he actually thinks the shoes are worth five hundred dollars, folks. The dude's a genius. Yeah. He just got about fifty million dollars in free advertising. That's what a number that I heard that somebody put on oh, yeah. all the, what yep. he's been doing this whole weekend. Being how on. much people have talked about it? He was it. all over Fox Sports One. He was all over ESPN. Yeah, it's, yep. it's Dan one Levitard of those... show did a whole show dedicated to it. And he's a genius. He makes it so that people have to talk about it, especially because he knows that all those sports shows are going to talk about it at way lengths so let me ask I you agree. a little question and it's do, on does every a, facebook post every instagram post everything that the sports stations do is just free putting it out there for sure these shoes cost 4.95 oh, yeah. come it? and get them yeah it's absolutely genius and do you, it's so much exposure so yeah. does a little piece of you if you don't know what we're talking about where, where have you been but obviously lonzo ball's father just i mean well lonzo ball is Poor who, lonzo who, who, ball. who deli- designed the shoe i hate lonzo apparently ball. he designed the whole shoe the dad had nothing to do with it and the dad's taking zero of the profits is what he said this is all going to Lonzo. He's getting his own profits from his own new he's pages. He's doing fine. He's yeah. not, I'm doing fine. Yeah. He's but doing fine now. Yeah. Sure he is. He's a household name in one month yeah. from just being a, a loudmouth gas bag. Well, right? we're talking about it now, so what well, is that? And, and that's what I'm saying because I think he's actually more than just a gas bag and a loudmouth. I think he's a genius. I think it's phenomenal what he's done because you love him or hate him. He just earned $50 million of free advertising, and doesn't a little piece of you kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of want to get that shoe a no, little bit? not even a little, a little bit. bit. Just to say that you have it, just like a Gucci handbag for a chick? I'm never, I've never been a shoe guy. Me neither. And I want one. That's weird. I'm just going to say that getting that much free advertising does represent the brand well because that is a big baller move. Yeah. For sure. He just yeah. took every... $220 for the slide-on sandals, and you know what? It doesn't matter if not a lot of people buy them, but because of the price point, just a few people who want to seem cool like I do, he's going to make a bunch of money. He hijacked every level of media. Oh, yeah. Every single level oh, of yeah. media Think about how many he people hijacked. He pissed off. It's the a advertisers. huge move. He pissed off the advertisers. He pissed off the shoe companies. Like, he's just saying, I'm going to do it all. That's ballin'. That's a big baller move. Yeah. You got to give Can't him credit where credit's him. due in that. Absolutely. Well, I don't think his son's going to be the uh, next LeBron James at, in the least bit. <laughs> I'm glad you believe that because I hate Lonzo Ball. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Let me defense. ask you this question. This was, this was posed on um, on the Leopard Hard Show, which, you know, I absolutely love. Um, what's the name of the guy at the NFL draft who just went off on um, Philly fans? Thanks for letting me. He was a cowboy. Oh, well, they, they said Goodell told him to rile him up. Shut up. Yeah. Is Didn't that you read true? that? That same guy you said he he was told by Goodell to rile him up. Don't you um, follow wow. Ballerstool Sports? Like, where did <laughs> you get you know your news? Uh, on, no, I don't remember the uh I don't remember the name of the Cowboys player. It I don't is. pay attention Drew Pearson. to the rounds That's like right. four Pearson. through seven. So I'll actually play oh, the we're clip. We're gonna play this, right? Yeah, now. I'll play the clip because I want to pose a question. Well, I, it's not my question. I don't even want to take credit for it. Dan Lebetard posed this, and it, it, it makes a great point. How much different is this, what I'm about to play for you, from what Levar Le, Le, Le Ball is doing? What's the difference? Here you go. To announce the Dallas Cowboys selection, please welcome. Just skip ahead here. All right. 
Now, this is a Cowboys. You know this. If you don't know this, it's a Cowboys, former Cowboys player at the NFL draft in Philly talking to Philly fans who we all know are pretty much uh, out of control. The worst. Cowboys! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so much fun with it right and everybody wow. even philly fans love this guy afterwards the response was phenomenal because he's just riling them up he's yelling yeah. at him he's being a loudmouth what's the difference between that and lavar ball being a loudmouth why do you hate him and you love drew pearson well you're talking about two different things i think like i'm, I'm, yeah, I'm no, pairing I'm two loudmouths see i'm i'm different i don't so think he's a loudmouth i think he's so i think he's he knows what he's getting into He's going in as a former cowboy into Philadelphia. You don't think LeVar Ball knows what he's getting into? No, I think LeVar Ball is, I think LeVar Ball is, oh crap, I have three really sons really good at basketball who are highly recruited. Let's start marketing them right now. Yeah. He's talking okay, about a okay. building. So, he's talking about building a brand. This guy is yeah. selling the Cowboys history on and dumping on Philly. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel I almost feel like the Drew Pearson yelling at Philly fans is like, you know, me ripping on one of you guys. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's funny. Yeah, we love it. We, we're all friends. We're family. It's kind of that thing where I wouldn't imagine that kind of a reception from Philly fans towards a Cowboy player. But he was almost having so much fun with it. Oh, but yeah. I think they took it that way. Whereas LeVar he Ball... He loved it. You can tell. He did. He was eating oh, it yeah. up. Which was, I think, why? Because he's like kind of like a sweet old man smiling and yelling at the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> but LeVar Ball is very like... I, I don't know. Do you feel like he's exploiting his kids? I really don't. I really don't. And a lot of people think that. And I think that's the division. I think he's taking advantage of his kids' skills in basketball. Turned down a $2 million the, shoe but, offer. But the thing is, year. those kids now... like. LeVar Ball's, the pressure on LeVar, or uh, Lonzo, and I'm sorry, because yeah. I get him confused all the time. Yeah. Lonzo's, pre the pressure on Lonzo, this the upcoming draft and yeah. going down, and even then, he might be even, his dad may even be of a genius for this, dropping his draft stock. Because the better team you get drafted to, the more likely you're going to win a championship. Very true. Oh, wow. So you because he's such that? a loudmouth, because they're because saying he's going to Because he's a loudmouth, he probably sure. will drop in draft stops. Because who wants, what NBA team and owner really wants to deal with Lonzo? Who? Or Le yeah. LeVar? Yeah, no. He's a he's a whole baggage carry now that comes with the Ball family. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. read about his what he did to the high school coach, to, to Lonzo's high school coach. That's quite a story. Ended up oh. getting him fired. I mean, indirectly <laughs> or directly. Basically, th threatened to pull his kid off of the team. And they, they, they see ya. Sorry. It's a big bag. It's it's crazy, man, to see the, just the marketing side yeah. of this. That I think, I mean, honestly, I think it was genius. Four ninety five. You think he'll actually? Oh, and the point that I wanted to make to, to tie this into the swimsuit uh, swimsuits, Brax. Yep. He's only making how many orders he gets. What the shoe comes? The shoe comes out in November. If you order a shoe right now, you'll get it in November. It takes about six months. And somebody actually called in. Again, oh, just, so it's all in pre-production right now. It's all in pre. So if you know anything about shoes, it takes about six months to develop a shoe. So all he's doing, if you do the math, made in November, that's six months. So what he's doing is he's taking the orders. Once you order it, he makes it for you. He's not making one shoe extra. Oh, so it Phenomenal. stops. Are they it putting stops. Like after the pre-order period. That's what I'm reading. That's what I've read so far. I well, could be wrong. Number them too. What? They should number them. Like, oh, there's just oh, one in a that's thousand. That's genius. That that you got genius. number six. You got eight uh, yeah, Boom. 850. Yeah. Imagine smart. getting like number one. Oh yeah. Like that's gonna go for probably millions of dollars. Yeah. I, I just the whole world we live in is changing as far as TV is consumed, entertainment is consumed, marketing is deployed. I mean, Absolutely. It's, this, this whole thing is just. 
It's really fun to watch. Yeah, it's awesome, especially coming from a social media marketing background. This yeah. is a case study for me. It is, all of this. That's why you guys, I know I talk about Levitar and I know I talk about ESPN all the time. I'm watching a case study develop uh, uh, in front of me. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. It's the but best thing you can do research-wise. Sport, the sports reporters got went off the air yesterday. That was their last show, Sunday. Yeah. Sorry to, uh, ooh, where are we? It's Thursday, Wednesday now? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday show. So, yeah, Sunday was the last sports reporters. <laughs> Is it, though? We're going to go down to <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday and Friday <laughs> shows per week. We're, 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 let's just make that we announcement. Got busy, we got busy lives. We got to keep up. Yeah, to, to segue into um, a little break, we've got an uh, interview coming up with Scott Ladati, author, and uh, just really cool dude. He's coming on um, from New York in the next segment. He'll be here in just a minute. But um, I do want to kind of just say we are starting to get in the thick of our set schedules. I know I am as a wedding DJ. I've got 10 weddings this month alone. It's been good. I've got four in one weekend coming up. So it's going to be tough to get a Monday taping in. Um, well, we're going to go down to Wednesday and Friday shows. I don't like that you don't know when our show is coming on. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's, yeah. Hard. it's hard to do that. Just well, hey, now here hopefully and there. this sticks. You know? Yeah. So we'll stick to Wednesday and Friday. And if I can't get anybody on, I'm going to actually do it. I'll just do a, a solo show. No, I'll come. Scares Just call me middle of the day. <laughs> okay, that'd be great. Because it scares the mm, out of me. I start before two. <laughs> I start at two, so anytime before too easy. noon. Okay, very good. Very good. Uh, two minutes. Two minutes, folks. We're not going to do this long, but Belly, how do you feel about your DC sports right now? Uh, please. They're going to... I've never stopped believing. I don't know why. See, that's the one struggle I have with Caps fans and a lot of fans out there of all sports. If you're going to believe, believe. Friends, we, we've all had friends let us down. But uh, they're still our friends, so believe in them. Wizards? At the end of the day, going all the way. No, the the Cavs series. <laughs> no, no, I believe. It. I do. I'll believe, put it out there. The no, Wizards will go to the. the they the, will be the best challenge to the Cavs. I do believe they'll beat the Cavs at least twice, but I don't think they'll end up beating the Cavs in seven. You've got Cavs, and I don't think six. they can beat the. I don't think they can beat the Warriors at all. The so. Dubs are just too nasty. You don't think if we had a shot, we would beat the Warriors in one game? No. What do you? I mean, you. What do they think out of the West Coast side of uh, with the Warriors? I mean, they're they're so uh, good. See, I'm a huge Dubs fan because of Iguodala and Steve Kerr. So Dubs being the Wizards, because you the had war, a, the Warriors. I mean, I mean the Warriors. The Warriors. Sorry, he had a Bullets jersey on, and we had a caller, our listener, calling and say, "Was he even born? Oh when yeah, they were the Bullets." Well, here's the thing. You were it, was one. A, it was a Gilbert Arenas bullet shirt. I know, but we did the math. You were one when they were the bullets. But you don't understand. Yeah. Well, hey, but that's awesome. But Gilbert Arenas was alive, and I watched him play. That, so oh, I yeah, just no, bought a throwback version of that. And having an Arenas jersey that says bullets on it is actually pretty ironic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's gangster. He went to Arizona, too. Yeah, really? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, he did. And here's more, more authenticity to my Warriors fandom well the giants have been my team in baseball since sure. i was a tyke because we didn't have the nats when i was a little kid mm -hmm. jeff so, kent and yeah you jeff, kent, jeff kent? jt snow looked like uh, yes. <laughs> jeff kent looks like he works at a circuit city oh yeah so you gotta get behind <laughs> oh, yeah. your boys exactly no so, i really do believe i'll say it i will say it right now to braxton blue my team will see your team in the nba finals zards in seven go down lebron Woo! Let's see it happen. Doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do this. We're going to take a quick break. Get hydrated. Get ready to go. Scott Ladati joins us next on Looch Dog in the Morning. At LITM Podcast. He is the author of Hawaiian Shirts in the Electric Chair and the new hit book, Play the Devil. He joins us now on Looch Dog in the Morning. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the show, Scott Ladati. What's up, man? Hey, hey what up, Looch Dog? <laughs> Dude, I am ready to talk to you, sir. You've got two hit books out there. We've also, I mean, we can find them all on Amazon. Tell me about your new hit book, Play the Devil, dude. How, how did you get into this? I read about it and I was like, what? This is a little bit different. It's a little different. It's not an autobiography. I want to put that out there, <laughs> okay. especially if my mom ever listens to this. Uh, <laughs> no, it's about um, I started writing it when I graduated college and uh, couldn't get a job. So I went home. My friend, uh, all my parents, all of our parents were like, uh, you know, go to college, whatever. My one friend right. who didn't do that and started a pool company is now the only one who owns his house. And uh, 
doesn't have any debt. So he hires all of us for college degrees to work for him also. Nobody goes to school anymore, man. It's pointless. It's over. <laughs> the dream's dead, man. Stay in school, kids. No. Scott, how old are you? Can I ask you that? Yeah, yeah I'm 29. It's 29. All, all right. I'm old 30. enough for some perspective. Well, I was going to say, I'm 33, and we always do jokes on this show about millennials. You're right on the tail end of it with me. Do you consider right. yourself a millennial? Yeah, I um, I guess so, because like our parents kind of are all the same exact mindset. So right. I would say that, yeah, we're, we're all... All of us at this age are in this together. Well, wouldn't you say that, I mean, the main character in Play the Devil, I, I believe is it's an adolescent, right? Going through some some interesting times. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, I, the, the character's are 24 years old. So, like, kind of like right at the graduation point of Perfect college. millennial. Ideal yeah. millennial. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, about how – they all thought it was going to like work out and they were going to get jobs and like it was going to be OK. And now they're servicing people and like weird people in their backyards right. cleaning their pools. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm glad you said that because servicing people, weird people in their backyards sounded a little <laughs> bit, <laughs> a little bit interesting there. <laughs> well, this book was originally going to be called Pool Boys Uh because that's what it's about. But then everybody was like, oh, like, there's no sex in this book. Right. Nobody's getting played. So, yeah, everybody's going to be disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So uh, I try to keep it close to real life because as a pool boy, you never get laid on the job ever. So that's only in, that's only in porno. I get or like, I don't know, maybe a better looking pool boy. I don't we know. should talk to a pool guy. I want a pizza guy. I want all these people that seem to be getting laid in, in, in these movies that apparently it's just not even close to true. Yeah, I don't see. It's all we're lied to from the beginning about everything, man. <laughs> it's true. Do you have any advice, sir, to millennials today? Well, I have a sister who's only four years younger than me, and her and her boyfriend are like experts with computers, video games, uh, and like we're just like a little too old for that. But the, in those four years, it's like uh, I mean, we know about as much of our as our parents technology which is almost nothing compared to a younger millennial so i don't know like does that bother you it looks like it bothers you a little bit no I, it's just it's crazy like i don't even know how to, to work the tv and then my sister comes over and her boyfriend's got the tv hacked through his phone yeah he's and, you know he's, and he's playing call of duty on the other thing so yeah <laughs> scott my uh my new tv came without a remote your phone is the remote you have to download the app what if you, I don't even, I don't have a smartphone. Like, what do you, what is I that do? thing? Oh my God. <laughs> is that a Blackberry? No, oh, man. It's like, this is my phone from high school. It flips. It's a sideways <laughs> flip open, like a Nokia, yeah. maybe? What is it? No, I, I don't know. It's like, uh, I don't know what it is. Wow, man. dude, it's, you're old school. I, have, I kind of appreciate that from you. I can't, well, it, I'm out of the loop on it, like Uber, stuff like that. It's like a whole world that exists that I can't operate in. Oh, wow. Now we're getting into too much. All right. Before we get into that, because I want to test your <laughs> pop culture knowledge. Um, can you tell me, sir, how you got you're only 29. You've written two books. They're killing it. If you look up his reviews on where on Amazon, where you can find his books and other places. But I mean, I'm looking at 19 reviews on Amazon right now for your new hit book, Play the Devil, that are just, dude, they're all over you. They love you. What's up? How did you get into this? I, I, I spent a million hours on Instagram and uh, I don't found like a lot of really cool people. There's a, a ton of amazing writers out there. Uh, and I was lucky to like tap into them. I Did don't they know. kind of mentor you because your Instagram following is pretty huge, too. Yeah, I got this one guy, Tom Young, who's one of my favorite writers. And he's like um, pretty much I mean, he's published and he's like been nominated for prizes and stuff. But he pretty much just self publishes now because it's not even. He's got like 40,000 Instagram followers. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, you don't even need a publisher. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I know. It's, like, all they do is take your money. So if you right. are good with social media, there's really no point. Do you use a publisher? How do you deal with that? Yeah, I, I got lucky. I, I have a publisher, and it's like an old punk rocker from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. No, so he, kidding. My best friend hails from there. No kidding. I'm sorry. You can just cut out. Oh, my fault. Yeah, my best friend hails from Lancaster, um, Pennsylvania. Quick shout out. They have nothing there. That's like you found a diamond in the rough. Yeah, I haven't even been out there. <laughs> it's, it's There's not much to see, dude. <laughs> there's not okay. much. Yeah, well, my dude's name is Pablo. And uh, 
I, I just found him. Um, I was submitting my manuscript everywhere, and uh, he got back to me. And th- this experience has been awesome. I still t- have two, two books. I have nothing but good things to say about him. I'll do you have another my- job? I'm curious. Do you have another job during the day, or is it all you do? You just write. No, I have the worst jobs, man. I, I like work at hotels, which suck. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's pretty much all I do now is like work as a – I was at Bellman, and then I – was the guy who checks you in. Um, sure. So it's always like grunt work with in customer service, which I'm not good with customers, so I don't know how this keeps happening. <laughs> well, you don't even know how to get them an Uber, dude. I don't know how you're going to help them out. Yeah. No, they just come <laughs> up with that. They're like, uh, they'll just be like Italian food. Like, <laughs> I'm not the concierge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And well, it's not like you can ever afford to live in the neighborhood that a nice hotel is in. So I don't know why anybody would ask you where you eat. No. <laughs> well, I'm curious, though, because I wanted to ask you about writer's block. I've done some writing in the past and, uh, you know, more music stuff than 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 books. I have tried to write a book. I'm about 75 pages in for 10 years now, Scott. <laughs> and uh, I'm curious, is it do you think you do you think having a job and something to go to and attend and take your mind off things during the day helps you? To be no. creative later or no? You'd rather just write and write and write. Yeah, I don't find – I mean I keep living in New York where you have to work like at least 70 hours a week to pay your rent. So <laughs> right, right. I mean I, I barely ever write uh, when I have a, a job. I usually quit my jobs after like nine months and then don't work for three or four months because I don't know. I can't write when I'm tired and I'm angry and uh, it's just like I feel like what's the point? Like why am I – you know – what am I doing? I'm just getting yelled at by customers, and uh, I don't even like the city that I live in. So you're not a fan of New no, York? No, I love I love New York, and I'm never gonna live anywhere else. But <laughs> it's I love mean, hate. It's still yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't enjoy being on a subway with a billion people smashed in, and you know uh, you want to get a beer, but they're all fourteen dollars, stuff oh, like that. that. Sounds a nightmare, dude. I, I I love New York. It's great. I'm down here in D.C. We're all East Coast, but. That right, just right. sounds pretty tough. I feel like if you're going to pay that, you might as well pay that in L.A. or something with nice beaches. Yeah, well, I just, I don't know. I moved out to L.A. for six months, and it's not New York, man. It's not New York. Tell me why. What's different? Uh, every I. What did you miss? I, the food. Uh, the people make sense on the East Coast. What's up with L.A. only eating quinoa? Yeah, the food's terrible. What is they that? They don't have spices. I don't know. They need an <laughs> influx of... And they have so many, like, Spanish people, you would think the food, the burritos and stuff like that are awesome. Well, the Hispanic uh, food and the Hispanic culture is very strong out there. And I will say, I had, not that it's Hispanic, but I had the best ramen I have ever had in L.A. I mean, it was real. It wasn't like the packaged 98 cents crap. (laughs) You know, but I will say, I I agree with you, man. I think food over here, um, I've only been to L.A. once, but, man, I just, I'm an East Coast, I'm an East Coaster for life. And I don't like the – which I thought I needed to be around, like, calmer people and uh, people who are, like, you know, enjoying life or whatever. Totally, but bro. <laughs> after, like, two weeks of that, it drove me insane. And I, I don't know. People smiling at me and stuff like that. Like, I like New York where nobody likes you. And, bah humbug! You know, yeah. <laughs> that it's funny sense. how you get used to that, right? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. All right. Well, he is Scott Laudati. His Twitter and Instagram at Scott. S C O T T L A U D A T I. You can buy his books on Amazon. They're called Hawaiian Shirts in the Electric Chair and the new hit book, Play the Devil. Before I let you go, I want to talk about that electric chair book real quick. We were talking about this. Did you see? Um, there's a, ah, I'm forgetting the state now. One of the states, I believe it's out Midwest, had said that they are asking the people on death row to provide their own drugs for the big day. Wow. Have you heard this? I No, I didn't hear that. The, I imagine it's probably Arkansas. I think it's Arkansas. It starts with an A. God, I, I'm pretty sure it's Arkansas. I got to check that out. I should have looked at that but first. That's yeah. my fault. No, they're they're trying to win the execution race, man. They, they're, they're trying to kill somebody every two hours. Oh, no, it's crazy. There. They can't find the drugs for it, whether it's Arkansas or not. I can't remember. I wish I could. But it's it's there's one of those states out there that's literally putting the onus on the the the, the death row person. Jeez. Right? Didn't you... Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I could see them being like, "You don't get your last meal if you don't uh, provide your own yeah, drugs." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, goodness. So, tell me about your book, Hawaiian Shirts in the Electric Chair, because that's very, well, that's what? very like Hawaiian shirts. Woohoo! Electric chair. What? Yeah. Uh, well, I used to only wear Hawaiian shirts, so that's kind of where that came from. But uh, 
also like just feeling i don't know like everybody hates you and uh and you're at your job where every customer wants to kill you. So that's why I, you and customer service, you get fired if you don't have a smile on your face the whole time. So yeah. oh, that's I, tough. Yeah, you're like this jolly idiot who people are <laughs> literally throwing all of their problems at. Well, I'll say, I mean, for Play the Devil, a lot of it talks about how there's this nihilistic view and kind of, I'm curious with you, I had to look up what nihilistic meant. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's basically that the the it, would would it be accurate to say that the meaning of life is meaningless? I mean, it is if you're of a certain class, definitely. So, so I'd like to ask you, what are your thoughts on the the secret, the law of attraction? Have you heard of any of this? Mm, the, the, yeah, the secret, like yeah. uh, you like you wish something into fruition. Do you believe that that's even possibly true? Or are you completely on the other side of that? No, I think that's ridiculous. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> now, I definitely firmly believe in it. Tell me why you think it's ridiculous. And I'm not going to – I'm just curious. I don't, you know, I don't know. I was raised really, really religious. And, uh, and it kind of when I came to terms with like not believing in any of that, I, I think across the board – like, uh, I don't really believe in karma. Um, I mean, I think you should do good things. Sure. Oh, what happened? Did I lose him? In this. There you go. Hey, what, together. When, um, yeah. to, after after karma, know. you cut off. Can you say um, what, what you said after karma? You don't believe in karma after that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think you should be nice because it, we're all in this together and it, it's not good to anybody. Um, not because you might get rewarded or something like that um i've just seen like as far as the secret girl goes so many hard-working great artists and it's like the chips don't fall right like no matter sometimes it works out but it usually doesn't i don't know well i mean look at all these people at espn that got fired yesterday did you see this no oh man they laid off like 100 people and some of the people that have been working there for like 10 15 20 years and so it's almost like i see what you're saying like it's not I don't think I think that's a common misconception that people think that the secret is like something that, you know, you work hard, you're going to get what you want. But I think it's something. Well, why that, don't you explain it to me? Because I only know it with like my mom's friends talking about it. Sure. So, no, I believe yeah. that it's I personally believe and talk about it all the time on the show. But I don't have anything against who, anybody who doesn't believe it because it's it's not provable. So what am I going to say? It has to exist. But I right. feel like it's it's a law just like gravity that exists. That's undeniable that you need to tap into. Whereas you put what you desire out into the universe and then because you're expecting it to already happen that's what people miss that they you have to expect it to happen you can't just yearn for it that creates a distance between you and that object but if you expect it's already coming into your life i think what it does is it puts you on a path towards getting that and opening you up to it i could be co totally wrong i just am fascinated by this stuff please scott loud daddy at scott loud daddy on twitter and instagram write a book about this i'd love it <sighs> Well, I, but that makes sense. But that is that the secret, or is that just like what you should be doing? You know, both. Like both. Because I think because people see oh the secret and they go, well, yeah, I'm gonna wish for a Ferrari. Guess what? I didn't get one. That's not how it works. See, that's kind of what I thought the secret was. So I guess I'm ignorant. I, yeah. Well, you just have. I mean, I think a lot of people are on your boat, and that's why yeah. I wanted. I had a feeling that was gonna be your response, and I'm glad that yeah. you can talk and and speak to that side of it because I know I'm not the only way of thinking. I know that, and I appreciate your perspective. But it's like, you, I mean, you get a guitar, right? Like you buy a guitar because you're envisioning learning guitar and then eventually you learn guitar. Right. So that's, I mean, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like that's what this, like you want to be a writer. So you work really hard and then you envision yourself and you become one. So, but is he that gets the it? He totally gets it. <laughs> what, it <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. He's I believe it. in the secret. All yeah. right. I flipped him in 30 seconds. That was Still perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Loud Daddy, author of Hawaiian Shirts and the Electric Chair, and of course his new hit book, Play the Devil. Twitter and Instagram at Scott, S-C-O-T-T-L-A-U-D-A-T-I. Buy his books on Amazon, sir. I would love to have you back on. Is there anything else you want to leave the people with before I let you go? Uh, keep reading. Keep creating. Don't go to college. <laughs> God bless America. We'll talk to him <laughs> soon. Thank you, Scott. We appreciate you. We'll be back after this. It's Looch Dog in the Morning at LITM Podcast. Hey, what's up? This is Scott Ladati, author of Play the Devil, and you are listening to Looch Dog in the Morning.
Welcome back, folks. It is Luch Dog in the morning. Thank you again to Scott Ladotti for coming on the show. Phenomenal sir. job, sir. I flipped him in 30 seconds on The Secret. Feels good. Now, I he, love it. He's one of those typical people that feel like if you wish for it, it'll be there. And that's bull. So, no, I don't believe in that crap. And I don't blame him for that mentality. I don't blame that. I mean, it's 99% of people, more or less. That's what they think, yeah. And so I'm glad we got to get into that. He's cool. We should have him. He could be a co-host. That guy was awesome. So thank you again to uh, having him on, for having him on. Scott Ladotti, check him out all over the place, guys. We just talked about it. So um, I want to do this. Pretty excited about it. Sitting across from Belly Matt LaBelle. How you feeling, sir? I'm feeling good. Ready to go to work. Brax, how you doing? Chilling hard. Where is Two Trees? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> two Trees! Hunting the Zangetti. Uh, Where is Hot Mess? animals. Where are you, Hot Mess? I don't know, but I saw she's going on vacation soon. I don't yeah. know where she's going. but Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's do this. I want to get you guys a new voicemail. We've got a message from Maddie, but not Maddie Potts. This is Maddie Mads. Yeah. Straight from North Carolina. We want to give her a chance to... Get on the show. We miss her, Maddie. We love you. Uh, let's see what she has. You haven't listened has. to this yet, right? Right? I have no idea what oh, this is. Oh, man. It could be great. Oh, yeah. It could be, be great. Excited. Just uh, a quick hello. No idea what this is. Luch, hey. It's Maddie Mads. Long time no talk, bud. Hey, I was listening to the podcast where you, Sexy Kim, Hot Mess Kim, and Belly were talking about... Um, what your significant other would dress up as. And I was thinking about it, and um, I kind of see where Kim's coming from. You know, just birthday suit is, is good and all, but if I had to have him dress up as something, fireman, yes. Also, a doctor. I know the guys like the, the sexy nurse costume and whatever, but... I don't know. I I would I would dig me a doctor or or a sexy male nurse. You know, let's get it on in the on call room. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I uh, I haven't really given it much thought, but that's what I that's what I have as of right now. Um, so call me soon because I want to be on the show again. I'll be a, a call in from Raleigh. So I'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, everyone, Kim, Belly, and the boys. Uh, hope to see y'all soon. Bye. Maddie Mads. Yeah, great call. Love her. Uh, yeah, get it on in the on-call room. I mean, in basically, the room. How, many, how many doctor shows are there that are fo- primary focus is female viewership? All of them. All of them. A lot? <laughs> a lot? I would say, okay, so what, what would you say is the, is like, the top? Uh, like Sexiest Mc- tr- male doctor. The, uh, Grey's Anatomy. That's the one? Sexiest oh, male yeah. doctor on TV. Is it House? No. What? <laughs> I bet there no, are so many women who love Grey's, House. Right? It's probably that guy from Grey's. They all love him. What's his name? McDreamy. Yeah, yeah. Who the hell like is that? Like his name is literally McDreamy. Yeah. I need this. <laughs> that's what they call That's the only name I know him as. Yeah, me too. What's so, the show? Grey's Anatomy. What is that? Never heard of. No. Are you I'm never kidding, heard of I'm Grey's? kidding. I'm Please. kidding. I just want to know who this is. Have you ever met a is. woman? <laughs> oh, that guy. Right? Oh, that guy. Derek Shepard. That's his name? Yeah. Yeah, he's just stick yeah. to McDreamy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, Derek Shepard, right? Well, he's played by Patrick Dempsey, but yeah, Derek oh. Shepard on the show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought McDreamy was his actual name. I don't watch Grey's Anatomy, though. so that's <laughs> I assume that's got to be the go-to. Some so guy I guess mash. that would make sense, but I bet there are a lot of chicks out there who are all about Dr. House. Daddy figure? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No. The Females. drug addict? A very small <laughs> percentage. But he's also got that prick to him that I think got, uh, girls kind of gravitate towards like maybe a little broken girl he, like a broken girl would really like that, that show i feel like doesn't bang anybody <laughs> <laughs> Again, i've never seen any of these he has <laughs> one girl he's always focused oh, on she man. shuts him down like 90 percent of the whole series <laughs> maddie <laughs> maddie i want to know would you rather mcdreamy or uh, dr house please please we know the answer right. oh, yeah there's no who else is there what other this. doctor shows are there I don't know. Soap operas are all done. Uh, Scrubs. Uh, Scrubs was back in the day. Oh Scrubs. yeah, that's a good one. But that was a comedy though. Yeah, Scrubs but is good though. There's probably some like heartthrob on Scrubs. I mean, I never really watched. I it. I bet you a lot of people like Doctor Cox. Now he's got that <laughs> tickish you're talking about. That's like, you know, what a name, Doctor Cox for the hot, for the heartthrob. Oh, cool. <laughs> 
No idea. Just because uh, it sounds like a poor name uh, in, a, yeah. in, a, in, a, <laughs> Dr. in a doctor Cox. scenario. It's like Kim. It's still, his name was Dr. Cox. <laughs> it's like Kim, whenever I pull up the karaoke program, it's called Kara Fun. She thinks it's porn. <laughs> sounds like a porn that's name. Slutty Kara and her fun. Well, that's like, there's this fashion line in LA called Nasty Gal. I've, yeah, I've heard I've of that. I've heard of that. But yeah. that's yeah. because of Trump, right? I mean, that would make sense. What? Didn't that come out because of the Nasty Woman? I would imagine. I'm just guessing. No, 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 no. It was this designer, Sophia and Marisa. It started in 2006. Oh, there was yeah. a whole oh, Netflix wow. series on it. It's called yeah. Girl Boss. It's actually a really good show. Rex! But yeah, it's called Nasty Gal. And when they tried to register the, uh, the URL yeah. for. To launch the website, it was a porn site. Yeah. Real, so na- they had to make it gal, nasty gal it. vintage. This is my work computer. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it, I mean it's probably changed now, but they registered it when they started as nasty gal vintage. I'm sure once they got enough money, money, they tried to buy it. Do you guys probably whitehouse.com? Yeah. What was it? Whitehouse.com. Growing up, no. Whitehouse.com growing up was a porn site. <laughs> what? So if you as a as a height like I remember being in high school, they'd be like, now go to the website whitehouse.org. Why wouldn't it be dot gov? Or dot be- gov or whatever. <laughs> because if you go to whitehouse.com, it was definitely a porn site. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I remember that. Um, that's very good. Very good. Uh, quick question to you, because we're, we're kind of on sexual attraction right now. She said firefighter also. There's not a lot of firefighter shows geared towards women. Yes, there is. Women. Are there? Chicago Fire. That's the only one I could think of. <laughs> Chicago something. Oh, That's no. It. What's the other? There's another one I know. Rescue it's Me like was a FX. really good firefighter Rescue show. Me. I that, uh, Rescue Me. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 Then it, um, yeah. That was a really good show. It was on FX, I think, back in the day. Yep. Can I show you guys really my phone background? Sorry, I remember. What's your phone background right now? Because I was talking to a random female, and then I put my phone down, and I forgot that this was my background. That's your background right now? Who is that? How do we feel about that? It depends on who How do we is. Is that weird, creepy, cool, or normal? Right. You know well, what I'm going right. to say? All right. For everybody out there. There's a difference between <laughs> this what, black screen? Well, and, no, the, you're... and that. All right. Like no, this is a porn right. star on my phone. She's so, a full-on porn star, and it's from the from the half up. She's got a shirt on and some bunny ears. This is kind of where I wish Kim girl. was here, because mm. yeah. Kim's background is of two men shirtless. That's why I felt good about it. If she can have Hemsworth and whatever his name, I can have Angela but White. I'm not gonna lie. It feels like you're like taking pictures out of magazines and putting them on the back of your door. Uh, feels well, like here, here. <laughs> I'll take you into the home not. screen. <laughs> that's once you unlock it. That's yeah. your, that. So is mine. So is mine. Once you unlock it. Oh, I thought that was like no, no like no, okay. Because no. I mean, a kid could pick it up. But so yeah, I was basically are. looking at my okay. phone, talking to the wedding venue owner, and and then I like put it down like that, and I looked at my computer, and she immediately said, "I'm gonna go check out what's going on over here." And I was like, "Oh, that was abrupt." And then I looked down, and the picture of the porn star is on my front, uh, my phone. Now, well, she's not naked. That could she's also not, she's clothed, and I don't think it's one like you guys don't even know who she is. I mean, she's popular, getting more popular, but you guys don't even know who she is. That so no, yeah. that could even raise the question like, oh, is that your girlfriend? Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was my point. You're not like, oh, that's a girlfriend? porn star. I know her. <laughs> <laughs> she probably knows her. That's the thing. <laughs> Maybe she does. Maybe she does. But you don't know that's not my girlfriend. Yeah, true. I guess. I just like looking at a pretty face when I look down. That's all. I'm not looking. She's not naked. I'm not trying to be weird about it. Find me another picture of another pretty girl. That's fine. I just like that picture. I was like, oh, that's going on my background. But then I started thinking, like, is that inappropriate? No. Like, is your screensaver a bunch of pictures of like women just flashing by? Do you remember back in the day they had stripper desktop screensavers? Yeah. Like a stripper would come across your bar and she'd like start taking her clothes off. No way. Oh, that was before your day, dude. That was like right when the internet came out. It's like Windows ninety eight. Yeah. Ninety five. Ninety five, bro. (laughs) (laughs) What year were you born? Oh my goodness, ninety four. Oh my god, no way! Oh, it's so cool. Nah, ninety eight's where it hit. That was peak. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah right in the peak of the right air. past dial up oh yeah oh. <laughs> so should I change my phone background no what's your front screen background just that just like um, nothing fame oh a it's crowd like, it's a crowd yeah, yeah I put my phone backgrounds as wish boards is that what they're called so mid, your wish board right now board. is well, fame and a porn that. star fame and a porn star <laughs> Well, those things usually go hand in hand. Yeah. Once you become famous. Fame and a beautiful woman. It doesn't. Yeah. I don't want to date a porn star. In Some fact, people it, use porn and become famous. 
There you go. Well, yeah, <laughs> Mia fine. Khalifa again. Shouts out episode. Oh, what episode three? We're back. She called him out again. Oh yeah. Because he sl- slid in again. <laughs> <laughs> Did it happen again? He after he got drafted, it was Mister Irrelevant. No way. <laughs> time out. Time out. Time out. We're talking about Mia Khalifa, former porn star. She's like twenty four no. now, and she got all up in Chad Kelly. Um, this is Jim Kelly's. No. N- Yes. Ne- nephew? Jim Kelly's nephew. Oh, man. It's Chad Kelly. Is Jim Kelly actually? was the Buffalo Bills quarterback. Chad Chad Kelly, his nephew, got into some trouble, did not get invited to the combine, oh, and was was the last pick in the draft, who is also known as Mr. Irrelevant. But Mia Khalifa was all about blasting him online because he was trying to slide into her DMs. Did he do it again? He tried to do it again. What? 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 Because she broke it last tried time. It. She either tried it again or basically she was like, speaking of Mr. Irrelevant... And uh, then it was fact check. post. Fact check. Yeah, and then remember this? Speaking Here, of yeah. Mr. Irrelevant, Mia Khalifa was like, hey, <laughs> Chad Kelly, put you on blast again. Any oh. opportunity to put him on blast. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> Mia Khalifa can't quit roasting Chad Kelly after he becomes Mr. Irrelevant. Oh, see, so she basically said, guess who? Look, Mr. Irrelevant. Remember this? Oh, man. <laughs> Well, this was like la- during the draft last. Oh man, it was so good. No way. Yeah. I did not see this. I yeah. hear about this till right now. Yep. Still going again. I love it. Yep. It's, com- it's all coming back. It's all <laughs> coming back full circle. She just keeps trolling on the fact that he's Mr. Irrelevant. Like she, she's probably written. Oh, that's uh, wow. She's really hung up five, on him. Six tweets. It's like yeah, it's almost like she's starting to like him. Yeah. You know what? I think she kind of does. I think so too. Because this is like... <laughs> Dumb Bozo writes, at Mia Khalifa, I've got even money that says, before the weekend is over, he slides in and asks if you want to be Mrs. Irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. She's oh, very man. talented, too. She's from D.C., I believe. She um, is. Does all kinds of very DC sports talented. stuff. And she's very um, beautiful as well. But <laughs> No, she's a fun podcast to listen to. Um, I like to do wishboards. On my phone backgrounds, whatever I want to attract, I put it on my background, so I'm not actively thinking about it. Just but whenever you pick up your phone. No, it's a, you don't. When he asked me what my front screen was, I had no idea what the answer was, even though I know I look at this picture eight million times a day. Yeah. You know, it's just a subconscious thing of oh yeah, I put it for a bunch of people in a crowd cheering towards what should be me. <laughs> I want some fame, damn it. Fame. What's dun, up? Dun, 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 dun. So I don't know. Appropriate, inappropriate, clothed porn star on your phone background. Well, it's not like anyone knows, you know. I'm gonna say it's appropriate. What if it is somebody that they know? Like, what's the difference of that and like having I don't know Kim Kardashian on there? There's not to me. Not much. Yeah, okay, no, let's guess, change it. What's well, the difference? Kim of Kardashian having... technically is a porn kind star. Kind of. She has. Yeah. A porn. <laughs> so what's the difference of saying? Let's say like there her is no and difference. we'll say um, Jessica Alba. What's the difference? Oh, because you haven't Alba. publicly seen her in the bedroom. I had her on my background. Same for a attraction. While. I mean, as a juvenile, <laughs> when I was yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I did this stuff, but I I just Are don't you feel calling like me immature. <laughs> I, I may We're getting I may be Chad man. Dixon you right now. I may be <laughs> pulling at you and going, you know, it just kind of views it as a little immature. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Very well done. Very well done. Oh um, man, I do want. I'd like to end on something here today. Did you guys see? I hope I have it still. Let's just take a. Whew, everybody just take I just a don't get Let's take I, a breath. the porn star in the background. Do you really need like I like Kim, his. Kim just texted me. What's everybody's schedule tomorrow? I like his. Like? <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow my schedule should write, is. Should I write? We're taping right now. T- should I write? My schedule is I work at 2 p.m. Like I do all the freaking <laughs> time. <laughs> like literally every day. Yep. Hot mess, Kim. You don't even know. <laughs> live, live messaging into the show right now, folks. Yeah, she's texting. Oh, she's Happy gonna be, Wednesday she's gonna morning. Age, Matt. <laughs> she's like, how dare you? <laughs> she's going to be so mad. What I wanted to get into, all we got uh, texts in from our hot mess. Have you guys seen the, what establishment has the best tasting soda, specifically Coca-Cola? Oh, McDonald's. Easy. Like everybody knows McDonald's Coke tastes amazing. Right? It's so real, though. I don't know why. I do know why. Is. They just released it. Really? I've heard all kinds of stories about it. What's I don't know how. Secret? I mean, this article. Do they actually clean their machines every day? That's part of it. Is oh, there man. <laughs> actually Coke in there? That is part of it. So let me just extend here. Um, I heard. Now, this was my accounting teacher back in the day in college when I was like 19 or 20. My gen ed classes. 
He said that the reason that they're better, Belly, stop looking at it. You're cheating. He said, I look. <laughs> Kim just texted one word. Rude. 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 We thought that. I'm going to say we thought that you would have more than that. Tell her uh, that it. Right, let's go. Let's go. Right. Tell me about why. How, how, Sorry, how Clyde. did Coke get better? So, yeah. My accounting teacher said it was because if you notice. Most of Coke establishments, uh, most of McDonald's establishments have the Coke machines behind the counter. You don't get the opportunity to go back and refill. Whereas a lot of the newer ones have, like any place has a refill station outside. And so they can regulate the syrup a little bit differently because not, it's, you're not as apt to go up for a refill if you have to ask somebody for it. Whereas if you just walk up by yourself and, and pull it out. Psychology. Yeah, that's what he was saying. I was like, oh, it's genius. Okay, well, he's wrong. He's wrong. <laughs> So tell us the real reason. So 25 years later, when you got out of college, <laughs> you figured out the truth. <laughs> Do they make food saltier so that your taste buds are more, respe more receptive? This is from 22words.com. No, that is not why. Why? We I need to know. McDonald's, <laughs> McDonald's Stop simply, lingering. McDonald's put this out on their website. It says, we simply follow the guidelines set by Coca-Cola and then take steps to ensure it tastes the same as when you buy it in a bottle. So they're oh, going for that's a bottle. It. Mm. They're first doing off, some background stuff. First off, the Coca-Cola syrup is delivered to McDonald's in stainless steel containers, which helps preserve the ingredients, which in turn makes the soda taste fresher. Instead of bags. Not in bags, exactly. Other fast food restaurants don't deliver the Coca-Cola syrup in stainless steel, but rather in plastic bags. Nice Boom. and done, Belly. Boom. Apparently, them. a simple thing like this oh, is yeah. a huge difference. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Trying to switch those out is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, next, the Coca-Cola syrup is mixed with the freshest water possible. That's what they say. So they, they really take a... Like, they like, making it with Kongan water, like... Well, no, they have like like Colorado the game. <laughs> Springs water. No, they... they, they purchase a water filtration system to make sure that the h2o that mixes with the syrup it's going to be clean and fresh but it doesn't stop there they also put the water through an insulated tube to ensure that the coca-cola is kept completely cold they making moonshine and then the water flows yeah. through this tube in order to keep it at a temperature of just above freezing so they wow. make sure that their temperature That's allows some care to, of coke. <laughs> Dude, listen, listen to the. This is the care. end of it. I know this is a lot of copy, but th this temperature <laughs> allows for it to achieve peak CO2 levels, which then gives coke that crisp, bubbly taste and makes those bubblers uh, bubbles last longer than the bubbles at other fast food franchised. Also, the syrup is pre-chilled, and yes, then there is the straw, which is wider than usual. So, question: Wow, when was the last time you drank coke out of a glass bottle? Uh, my buddy Kami Bodagi only buys them that way, so it's been within two years. But yeah, it's been. It, I mean, I, I've seen it. The only it's way. So good. So dude. every time my dad, my mom drags my dad to Costco, there's no way he's not coming home with that 24 pack yep. of the glass bottle. So Cokes. much better. That's gangster. And it is the best way <laughs> to drink tits. Coke. It's the only yeah. way. So if that's how they wow. do it, I'm only getting my Coke from McDonald's from now on. Right? <laughs> wow. That wow. I'm fascinated. Yeah, who knew? Yeah. Right? That's I mean, like a lot of steps to take. But think about this. When I just said, hey, uh, who's known for having the best Coke? How fast did it take you to get the right answer? Two, point two seconds. Again, yeah. going back to the beginning with marketing. I mean, hey, if it takes just making sure that it's, you know, what did we say? They ship it in stainless steel instead of a bag, and now everybody knows that your Coke tastes better? Yep. Don't worry, if you're not, it's you're actually just getting pep Pepsi, folks, for everyone who uh, is everywhere else. Oh, come on, you know you can tell the difference. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell the Easily. difference. Easily. All right, folks. God, I missed you. It's been good to be back. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We'll see you Friday this week. We're going to get Hot Mess Kim tomorrow, maybe. Uh-oh. <laughs> so maybe respond. Maybe I'll do just me and Kim tomorrow. Ooh. And we'll blast you guys. Shut Ooh. out. Brax, it's great to have you back. Welcome home, man. Yeah. Good to be back. We'll see you back Only on the show. For couple minutes yeah you're going back to the beach this weekend yes i am god bless america belly we'll see you soon oh yeah i mean i've got plants here and there coming up but uh i'm always available all right for belly matt labelle for two trees for hot mess for braxton blue and for maddie Jevons, mads everybody maddie mads and maddie yeah, potts maddie thank mads. you maddie mads for joining us today we will see you guys on friday it's luch dog in the morning at litm podcast